Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really cool guest to talk to me, but before I introduce you to him, let me ask you something. If you had the opportunity to go to Mars, never come back, one-way ticket, would you take that opportunity? Would you take the opportunity to go and live on Mars forever? Let me know in the comments below. My next guest, Ben Krieger, might just be one of the people who'll get to do that. He is one of the six Canadians out of 100 people who have been shortlisted to go on the Mars One mission. The Mars One mission began in 2011. It's a nonprofit organization based in the Netherlands and have put forward conceptual plans to colonize Mars by 2025. Uh, so the planning has been extensive since 2011 and in 2013 they opened the pools up for whoever wanted to be a candidate to go to and live on Mars forever. Um, they've been shortlisting down, shortlisting, shortlisting, and now finally they have narrowed it down to 100 people, and Ben Krieger is one of the six Canadians who might be able to get to go. They're going to finally narrow it down to 24 people, and in 2024 they will send the first group of four, and every, every two years from then they're going to keep sending four people. Um, so I have Ben here with me all the way from Germany. Thank you so much for taking the time and being here with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay, Shruti. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. So, I, first of all, I know everyone has already asked you this, but how did you feel, what was your first initial reaction when you found out that you were one of the six Canadians and possibly one of the shortlisted candidates to go to Mars? How did that make you feel? Uh, I was pleasantly surprised because I thought I did uh, kind of poorly in the interview. Really? Uh, yeah, the image from my webcam was upside down. The, the laptop I have has an upside down camera. Usually it's corrected in software, but uh, Chrome failed me. Oh so, no! <laughs> interview. Oh no, well I mean, so you were pleasantly surprised and now um, I know that the chances of it narrowing down to 24 from 100 is very slim. There's still a lot more to go. There's a lot more questions and, you know, things to prepare to be shortlisted. But let's hypothetically, let's hypothetically say that you did uh, get the opportunity to be one of the 24 and then uh, subsequently be in four, like groups of four to go every two years. How does your family feel about this? I mean, you are 28 years old, if I'm correct, and I mean, you're young, you've just been, you're, you're done with your PhD. How does your family feel about this? Are they supportive of what you wanted to do? Yeah, well, I, I mean, they don't, they don't want to lose a relative, you know. But, <laughs> of course. Uh, behind me 100%, and they're, they're all ready to have me on that 20 minute delay so that we can still chat with each other over the internet. Absolutely. <laughs> That's amazing. So um, now let's get to the little fun questions um, about going to Mars if you do get the opportunity. What is something that you, you're you going to miss about being on Earth? You know, I'm sure you might miss something. What's something that you're going to miss? I think I'm going to miss the variety of food. You know, you're going to have to be very <laughs> ascetic vegetarians for a long time. <laughs> so now tell me one thing. Um, what is something that you are afraid of? I mean, I'm sure um, this isn't something that you don't just put your name in and you know maybe you win the lottery, but this is something huge. It's a one-way ticket. You're never going to come back. What is something that you're afraid of going uh, to Mars? The thing I'm most afraid of is doing something embarrassing on television and going from you know potential astronaut, which is up here, to, to a failed reality TV show star, which is down here. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't want I, that to happen. That's the last thing. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's what keeps me going, really, is the fear of that. <laughs> and um, if you got the opportunity to take something with you, um, what would you take? And no, you can't say you're going to take a vat of Nutella that has an infinite supply. That's not possible. <laughs> What's something. It's heavy anyway. <laughs> Sorry? That's too heavy anyway. <laughs> That's true. So, what what would be something that you could take if they if they said that you were you were allowed to take something? Maybe like a nice. I don't want to give like a, a hyper Canadian answer, but a nice bag of pemmican, you know, <laughs> just in case. Like if I dried meat, it's gonna last forever. It's in there with plenty of fat. You can eat it for a long time. Very nutrient dense. And if something really goes wrong and you run out of supplies, everybody can have a few days worth of pemmican. 
<laughs> just you know, one or two kilograms with an extra weight. Very Canadian of you. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, um, I think the last last two questions I really wanted to ask you is, um, this hasn't been an easy process. I mean, I mean, actually, I, I don't want to say that if it's been easy or if it's been hard, but what is what have you been doing mentally to prepare yourself for this? I mean, it's not like your running has is going to end anytime soon. You're still in the in the running to be one of the people going. What are you doing mentally to prepare for this? And um, when you do, if and when you do get to go to Mars, what is a personal accomplishment that you want to achieve when you go there? Well, the, the mental preparations have been kind of light. I've been trying to save all of my mental energy for my job, uh, which is starting to get demanding here in Germany. But um, I think the first most reasonable goal that I could get to, you know, aside from the kind of grandiose stuff like light gas guns and space elevators to launch things into space from Mars, <laughs> uh, just to be able to build a mirror and shine light on the solar panel in excess of what it would normally get. Amazing. Because the sun is a lot dimmer from the, from the you know, the further distance that you are away from the sun. So that, that solar panel can probably take a lot more light than it gets. And you would be able to get excess electricity and oxygen and food that way, which is very important. That's... I hope that this is something that you're saying in, in your videos when you're submitting it because that's absolutely incredible and I really do hope that you do get to be one of the people that get to go um, because then I can say that I got to interview with the guy that got that <laughs> that went to Mars. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, thank you so much and best of luck with everything. I can't imagine uh, how excited you must be, but thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Well, that's fantastic. I um, completely forgot to record an ending to this, but I figured you guys can see um, a very unattractive picture of me. I tried my very best to get the least attractive screenshot from this video. I'm sure there's plenty more, but I couldn't find anything better. So there you go. You get to watch me and my very attractive face. Well, I say thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you for being here on my journey, and I will be back with another video really soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was such a pleasure to interview Ben Kreger and uh, learn about his uh, future plans with Mars One, and hopefully I hope he gets to get to go because he really is excited about it, and I will talk to you guys really soon. That's all I have for you today. I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye, guys. Okay.